So last Friday, I uh, announced that I was officially really fucking fed up with Nick Ricada. And the result, the fallout of that has been extremely interesting. I wasn't expecting... I mean, I don't know what I expect anymore. I, I, I feel like I have a very small corner of the internet, and not a lot of people think about what I have to say. Because it doesn't feel like people take me seriously. It really doesn't feel like I, I get, you know, as much attention as I, I feel, as, as I feel I deserve, to be quite honest with you. Um, it's like when I try to have reach out to, like, companies that are important to the, the forum and stuff, it doesn't feel like I have any reach or any pull whatsoever. But then whenever I say anything, it kind of reverberates uh, on my little podcast. I don't know what the deal is. Maybe it's just my my uh, exertion towards other streamers and shit. I don't I don't know how to phrase it, but um. So effectively, what happened is is that with Ricada, I I was annoyed by his primarily his defense of Vito who again I maintain as a pedophile and I felt like he had made other mistakes and I think actually the last stream all I did is I made fun of oh god I can't even remember it's so much has happened that I'm trying to figure out exactly where Friday was and what was before that and what was after that I made fun of Drexel and that's one thing that I'll cover um, the other part is that I I was upset with how he was aligning himself with Dick and Vito over number one over Eric July and that he was defending Vito in general, which I, I consider to be out of character for him. And I think the main thing was the Drexel thing because he, he had been upset that I had called it grooming or oh we oh okay i remember I talked about his shower thing, the shower conversation that we had, and that upset him. And um when I, I talked about my my take on Drexel and how I believe that he used his position of authority over a 13-year-old to prepare her for sex by the time that she was 18, which is the literal definition of grooming, both he and Drexel took issue with that. And he went on, like, serious tirades about how shitty the forum was. Drexel lost his fucking mind. And uh, let me just see if I can just pull up that and stop it there. First off, let me, let me play this clip because I found it funny. You better, you better keep your shit together. If I ever find out that you're dressing in drag and watching anime and and the Drexel shit's all true, I'm gonna be so pissed at you. I'm gonna come kick your ass. I'm gonna slide back and be like, I, I, I talked to this motherfucker and I thought that he wouldn't be a, a weirdo. So I have to go back and kick his ass now because he, since then, he literally has gotten, he's started watching anime. He dressed up in a like a school, like a girl leotard or something he dressed up in like anime girl shit and then watched um anime in like a coom dungeon on on twitch and then uh the directional shit's all true so all that has happened so very very strange in retrospect to hear that um the first thing is that i want to re circle around to this and this I, I find really bizarre after rakeda had persistently over months anytime i talked about him he said you have an open line to me if you have any questions about things that i've said you can ask me for clarification and i can i can in private i can just tell you um my take on that so the one time i actually took it because I, I i don't believe in that unless i like actually feel like i'm misunderstanding something but i wanted to be sure in one particular point because like i said i usually respond to videos i don't respond to random shit off the forum i respond to what he's saying on his videos so the one time that I was actually confused on the point is I didn't know what Ricada had said about Montograph. I just knew that he had called him a pedophile in some way. And I asked him, I said, what did you say about Montograph to trigger the lawsuit? And he said, and, and I quote, I don't have the signal message because we have a timer on that, but it was, it included the word prob, prob, probably. And it went along the lines of, uh, I think Montograph has probably, uh, sucked little baby dicks is along the terms. The key, the key part of that being probably that he gave himself a benefit of a doubt, and he said after that, uh, to the effect of, it's an, it, it's a statement that cannot be proven to be defamatory, 
and I assumed that the reason why he said that that statement was defamation proof is that it included the qualifier probably is a weasel word. Um, so I took that, especially because he said specifically that it was a statement that could never be proved to be defamation because it included the word, because I presume it included the word probably. I believe that he was truthful about that. And I didn't do any further, and especially because he's a lawyer and he would probably cover his ass enough or be smart enough to say that to cover his ass. I took him at his face value and I said um, that he said probably. I quoted him on that. And I was proven wrong. Uh, the actual clip had played and he said, Montagraph has always liked sucking little baby dicks. Always. The exact opposite of probably. Literally, the exact opposite of probably is an affirm affirmation. And it's a, um, it, it made his statement to me a lie. And in his follow up statements to this, Ricada said that he just forgot. It was, it wasn't that he was intentionally trying to deceive me. It was just that he forgot. And I'm thinking, <clears throat> how do you forget? How do you forget when you're being sued? You have a lawyer, you tried to represent yourself, so your initial filings were based off of, were written by yourself, so you should have had at least familiarity with the initial incident, and then when you handed it off to the lawyer and you were paying him tens of thousands of dollars for his extremely high rate and his fancy font to defend you in court, how do you not know what you said? How, especially this late into the, the proceedings of the case. How do you not know the words that you said that offended him so much that he's now suing you? Like, I know exactly what it is about Melinda Scott and shit that she keeps suing me over. I know exactly what uh, Russell Greer took issue with and has tried to sue me over and failed. I know because I, I had to pay a lot of money <laughs> to deal with them. So I, I and I read over the court filings myself and I know exactly what was said. How do you not know? Um, so it's either literally that he lied to me or he's so drunk all the time. He literally has no idea what he's saying, even when he's paying tens of thousands of dollars as a consequence. And then he gets upset when people call him an alcoholic. And I made that point several times. I say, I think that you are an alcoholic. I think that you need to lay off the bottle. I think that, uh, you're ruining yourself in real time. And, um, but I'll circle back to that. Um, the other thing that I said is that Riketa has based his defamation defense off uh, internet rumors that Montegraph had published a pedophilic snuff porn uh, video. And I, I looked into this <clears throat> when I wrote the Montegraph thread. I looked into where the origin of this was. And it came from video three of his um, Umbrella Man trilogy. He made three like really you know, shabby amateur films, um, on a, on a $0 budget. And they're just supposed to be like little horror vignettes or something. They're silly. They're weird. Um, they're not, there's not like any nudity in them or anything, but the third one was really hard to find. It's easy to find the first one. I had assumed that for a long time, <clears throat> The uh, second and third were gone. And in fact, I think Monty Raff even said that he tried to get rid of the second and third, that they were gone. He wasn't going to re-release them. So I said as a, as a thing, like, well, he better hope if this is what he's basing that statement off of, that the, you know, the second and third video, if he subpoenas them, they're going to be some like Serbian film tier shit, like things that nobody should watch. Or if you do watch it, you would immediately assume that the guys who made it are just like the worst people in the world. So someone actually dug up and found uh, two and three, and I'm not going to play it because it's just like, like, it's safe for work. It's not like there's anything too bad about it. It's just a guy, there's a, gr a grown woman in a, in a bunny mask tied to a thing, and the umbrella man is asking her to say ba. Like this, say ba. That I will mail your letter. It's just like a home video. And then he suffocates her with a bag. It's not like sexual torture or anything. And the only thing that makes it even remotely like um, have any kind of child anything to it is that the end of it is 
her family, I think in the context of the video, her family reads a, a runaway letter. So she's supposed to be like a runaway teenager, but she's clearly an adult woman. And it's from this video that Montagraph's original trolls said that um, he is a pedophile. And it's from those claims that Ricada then goes off to say that Montagraph has always liked sucking little baby cocks. And I'm just thinking there is no fucking way that you're going to be able to prove to a reasonable court, you know, to a reason, uh, in civil court, it's called preponderance of evidence. You have to, or in the UK, they use the same language and they refer to it as the 51% rule. You have to ha make a jury of reasonable people 51% sure that it is reasonable for someone to believe that Montagraph has, quote, always liked sucking little baby cocks because of these films and because of um, his trolls. I'm just thinking there's no fucking way. There's no fucking way that you're going to be able to convince people that that is, um, that that's a reasonable thing to derive from this. So it's, it's really uphill. He's really going to have to jump to some, some like tricky legal arguments to never get it to that point where a jury is going to have to decide as a matter of fact, as a matter of law, that a reasonable person could believe that Montagraph is a pedophile based off these videos and based off of what he said online, because that's not going to happen. That's how I feel. Um, and I, I and I said when I heard about this and I went over it, I said he, his best bet was probably re reconciling with Montagraph. But at this point, he has reiterated that claim so many times, and, and he's said that there's no reason for him to stop reiterating the claim because... Uh, the worst thing he could do in his defamation lawsuit right now is to suddenly change um, opinion and say that actually Montagraph isn't a pedophile after all. He should stick to his guns. I think that the smart thing to do would be to stop antagonizing him and maybe hope that there's some way out of this because that's extremely harmful. It's a, I mean, even if without the context of law, it's like a, a terrible thing to do to somebody who isn't a pedophile. <laughs> you know? So... I mean, he has a reputation for, like, suing people and being a vexatious litigant and stuff. That is not a reputation for being a pedophile. If you want to call him a vexatious litigant or someone who harasses somebody through uh, lawfare or someone who abuses the law, you're completely and totally within your right to do that. But to say that he's a pedophile because he sued people, you know, spuriously, um, I guess you can try... You can say that maybe that's morally justifiable because vexation, vexatious litigants are scum, but it's probably a really bad idea to make an actionable defamation claim against a vexatious litigant. And what's really funny is that I assume that Ricada just assumed that if Montagraph was going to sue, he would sue um, pro se. But Montagraph felt so sure that this was defamation that he actually hired an attorney for it, who I guess also assumed that he had a case. And now he has to deal with um, real legal knowledge and not just monograph fucking around with the court system which is the ultimate irony is that i think that he just assumed that monograph would file some pro se bullshit and then he would be off the hook after a couple um technicalities being filed but now it's the opposite there's a good case against him and he has representation to handle the case competently uh, which is the exact opposite of what he expected when he when he said what he did on live stream so like i said i think that de-escalation would would have been a good idea here everything that i say i try to make sure that i'm sure of uh, like especially with shit like that because you don't want to you don't want to say that about people if you don't mean it um anyways so th that's that part i'll skip past that there's a lot to go on eric july made a video addressing him if you don't know eric july is I talked about him just recently. I've never talked about him before. He's just a black guy and he just made some fucking comic book. He's just a black guy that made a comic book. And for whatever reason, Dick Masterson and his pet retard Vito Gasaldi are obsessed with this black guy and his shitty fucking comic book. Like, how? I don't even know how you can get emotionally invested in this. There, I, I didn't only feel that Vito is just jealous of the fact that his comic book is more successful, even though it's supposedly very generic. So... But for whatever reason, Juju the Cow and his pet retard pedophile, Vito Gasaldi, have been harping on and on and on about how this comic sucks, how his second comic sold less, how he makes bad business decisions, and so on and so forth. And it's just bizarre. And then, for whatever reason, Ricada decided, even though he... Ricada, who is the comic skate guy, who was on the side of... Um, 
of uh that guy, the Italian guy, Vic Lasagna. He was on that guy's side. He was a huge part of Comic Skate and Weeb Wars. He should be championing this self-made man. And instead, he's on the side of Vito and Juju for no reason. For no fucking reason. Um, so Eric July briefly addressed this in this little video that he made about the drama that was going on. So I'll just play like a little bit of it. It has been interesting to see as an example. I have to mention them because it's, I don't want to want anybody to think that like there's, a, there's some diss or a sneak diss. Like with Nick Ricada, for example, and I don't think he's nearly as impartial as he thinks of himself, and that's cool, right? He's known the other party, I think, longer than he has uh, uh, has me, and I just wish he would just flat out say it, and you know, instead of acting like, oh, he's so objective, mainly because I, there's things that just go, are going completely unignored as far as the context of what's been happening as if these there hasn't been people that are involved here that have worked overdrive to slander libel uh flat out lie misrepresent this company and uh even do kind of this 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 gay op stuff and uh, there's proof of it i'm not just saying on on one email or something i mean them just flat out admitting what it is that they're trying to do and contacting people or doing the doing this weird stuff or trying to incentivize people uh, and, and egging them on to try to get in some lawfare, like acting as if that's just not a thing is, is very intriguing. And it's not just with him. And and the, the reason why I bring that up is because I, I have way for way too long given people more credit than I probably should have. OK. And, and, and what I mean by that is that the rules for engagement of how they view us being cool is different. Like I, for example, wouldn't do something and they have no problem doing it. And so that doesn't mean that they're in the wrong when they operate the way that they do. It just means that I need to adjust because the rules have been established there. And now, and now I'm going to do that, right? The only thing that I require there is reciprocity. Um, I certainly will not. I don't want to be getting hit up and, uh, about stuff and somebody saying, well, you, you know, hey, we cool, right? We <laughs> no, like it, it ain't all good when it's not all good. And let's just be honest there. It's really it's very eloquent way. Very. Uh, he's trying to be nice. But what he's saying is that he's disappointed in Nick. He realizes that what his opinion of Nick is not shared by Nick. And therefore, he's going to start treating him differently, which means like he's going to ice him out. So Rakeda had direct access to this guy who is like a bit of a personality and who is doing this great thing, who's pulling all this money, who's a great person to know in his industry. And like unbelievably, for whatever reason, he has decided to stick with Vito the Pito who, and Dick uh, Juju the Cow over him. And I'm like, I really don't know what Juju and Vito represent to this guy that's so important to him. Because it's not even like a consistent stance. Quote Erot Nimmenstrindum. Okay, hold up. Oh, oh, here we go. I think this is... I Please, 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 please be, be the right clip. Oh, next, next clip. Roll it. Almost a year. Uh, it's not what lying, but what if up? it causes harm? What if that what if that causes it harm matter, somehow? He didn't make anything up. If he's delivering purely factual information, there's he's talking about Mr. Girl right now, the guy who did a bunch of videos about how he was attracted to the little girls and cuties that Vito agreed with. That's that's what he's talking about. And Dick is asking him, wait. What about the cuties shit and and uh, Mr. Girl who defended cuties? What if that leads to harm? And Vito says that's not harm. That's not harm because he said only factual things. The factual things were that he was attracted to children, apparently. But that's uh, that's okay. That's okay. And by the way, I think Mr. Girl should be allowed on YouTube. I think he's horrifying. I think his takes on cuties are disgusting. But I think he should be allowed on YouTube. Vito thinks he should be allowed on YouTube because Vito agrees Vito is attracted to children, according to Vito. It's Vito who said that. I don't know. Maybe he was joking. I have no idea. I can't know what's in someone's head. However, Dick is asking Vito about Mr. Girl. Can't that lead to harm? Well, 
I mean, can't him saying that cuties is a good thing and Netflix sexualizing uh, minors is a good thing. Well, what if that leads someone to go harm a minor sexually? What if that happens? That's the argument against child porn. It's literally the entire argument against child porn is reducing further victimization. That's why child porn is not allowed to be distributed because it incentivizes the creation and distribution of more child pornography, leading to further harm of children. That's the problem with it. That's the problem the law is trying to address. I mean, there are obvious moral problems with child pornography in general, but that is the wrong the law is trying to correct. Oftentimes with child pornography, the I mean, uh, every time with child pornography, the damage is done when the video is made, right? The child was exploited physically already. So remedy by, by preventing distribution, they don't remedy any harm to the chil children. That harm has occurred. Many of them are dead. Many of those children uh, are dead because those the videos that get propagated and circulated are old videos. That being said, what the purpose of those laws uh, is, are attempting to do is to prevent the incentivization of further victimization of other children. That's what they're going for there. So that's the argument Dick is making very briefly by saying, what about this cutie stuff? Can't that lead to harm? And uh, Vito says, no, no, it's fine. That's, that's fine. So at one point, Nurkita was sober enough that he could elocute such a thought and now number one he sound like there is something that like very convincing about um the um sorry hold up Sorry, I got, an, I got an urgent update. Anyways, he was at some point so so lucid that he was able to say things like that. Now, number he number one, he doesn't sound like that. I'm convinced that it is alcohol damage at this point because he he never even like when I try to watch his streams and shit, he never sounds as sharp as he used to. Uh, like there's an actual change in his uh, physiology, which has prohibited him from speaking like that for a long time. Number two. Like he's un unequivocal about his denouncement of Vito. He calls him a pedophile, and then now, when for whatever reason with Eric July, he wants to take Vito's side, give him the benefit of the doubt, even though Vito is using the royal we to refer to people from the Dick Show podcast harassing Eric July and his sponsors and stuff. And the thing is, it's like Dick has been around, I think, doing the podcast longer than I have. It was definitely the, the biggest problem in the universe was older than, than Man of the Internet. Because when Man of the Internet was starting, it was a new th the, the end of that was like a new thing. Um, but Dick should know how to phrase things to avoid liability. And I'm like, for instance, the first time I ever talked about Pat Tomlinson, I had to be really clear that there is a lot of stuff that the pests have done to Tomlinson that I absolutely do not agree with. And the it was a hard strike for me to strike the balance of showing things that are really funny versus not promoting, being explicit that I do not promote people doing shit like that. And for whatever reason, when Vito and Dick are talking about shit that now they're claiming that their fans are doing, they're using the word we. They're like including it. Like, yeah, we did this together. It's our thing. And we're fucking with Eric July and his business deliberately because as Dick says, he's a psychopath and he just gets off on hurting people. And it's just so, so reckless and retarded that even if he wasn't the one to actually send the email, the fact that he's in, in bolstering his users into doing these things, his listeners into doing these things, that their content can get featured on their podcast, it's ridiculous. And he should know better. He should know how to engage with fans who aren't all put together because a f like a scorned fan is like an extremely dangerous person to a, a podcaster like any anytime you have a scorned fan they're going to be like your number one a log forever for like 10 years even they're, they're never going to go away so he shouldn't he shouldn't fucking know better and he didn't um and then oddly 
after and I'll, I'll go through like his his molding about the fucking forum and then also drexel oddly after the washington post piece came out uh he made this tweet saying this is supposed to be a hit piece on the kiwi farms what it ends up being is a confirmation of a kabbalistic group of trans activists of the worst sort who are anti-speech this group of reprobate scumbags fancy themselves thought police but they end up being hyperbolic perpetual victims with unclean hands the farm has no love for me right now, but these decrepit digilantes are never going to, never the answer, and their ability to manipulate the levers of the internet is an affront to liberty. Uh, speech must remain free to the maximum. Defending the offensive and lawful is, and awful is the only defense worth mounting. Acceptable speech never means defense. Acceptable speech never needs defense. Unacceptable speech must be defended because all of our speech will become unacceptable in the longest timeline. So, really bizarre and, and i feel like he's tried to de-escalate a little bit because i i think that he was a little bit surprised by how quickly things seem to heat up and he sent me another message and this time he tried to, to in a more sober way try to reiterate everything he said without being insulting and infantilizing as he was before and the thing was, is that I didn't miss, he still thinks that there's like a misunderstanding that I, I am just, I, I just don't get what he's saying. And I totally do. And I, I, um, I, I wrote, sat down and I spent like 20 minutes and I wrote out what I would consider like a set of indictments. And I started off very strongly on that. I think alcohol has degraded his performance and his ability to think clearly. But then I went down and I said, um, what I thought about, a lot of things I, I talked about how um, uh, Drexel, Juju, and Vito are retards and liabilities, and, and I just went off and I list all these. And I thought it was a, a such an ironclad statement or a re rebuttal of what he had sent me, and I I I, I really really I, I felt like it was an extremely well worded thing. It was extremely correct. Um, and I didn't hope, I didn't have the audacity to think that I would be able to, to change his mind on anything, but I at least thought he would at least like take it to heart a little bit. Like he would at least respect it in some way. Cause it was, um, it was well put together. And his, his response was basically just like dismissive. Like, no, you're completely wrong. And there's no point even arguing it. So um i can now like safely say that whatever happens happens and i just don't feel like he can be reasoned with so there's no it, it's just gonna like continue downwards forever there's no coming back there's no point in being like well i shouldn't say this about him because that could like jeopardize him there's literally nothing that i can do at this point that would further jeopardize him more than his current mindset is um so a little bit disappointed and uh there's more tweets this is from his actual like upset um bruce says Vito can rage about eric july for a year now he can attack nerd Riot channel and get fnt and the channel ruined he can attack drunk 3po over his charity donations if you call him out though he becomes a sacred cow of comedy from various youtubers laughable he says this is a fun misunderstanding people aren't defending Vito as a sacred cow of comedy people are frustrated that People are intentionally misunderstanding the obvious, albeit shitty, jokes. And then the joke, uh, Pully the Polar Bear, fun name, asks, uh, what's the joke here? And it's just about how non-offending means we understand breaking the existing laws is a no-no. And all the other pedo shit, where he confirms, yes, we, as in we, me included, pedophile Vito. Says you're taking, you, the joke is you're taking Vito seriously ever. I just, I just can't believe it. I cannot, I cannot believe that he's taking this fucking retard and he's going to allow him to backtrack this. And what's really funny is that, um, I don't even think I mentioned this. I didn't get to mention this last stream, but if I did, I'll repeat myself because it's a poignant point that Vito is crying now. And he's saying, when I said that I was a pedophile two years ago, I was exploring the boundaries of comedy and trying to improve my craft. Like he's going on about how he's like an artist and he was just testing the limits to see what is and is not okay. And it was two whole years ago, guys. It was two whole years ago. 
So you should totally forgive him because it was such a long time ago that he said these things. And it made me laugh. I I saw this at some point and I laughed out loud because, um, as I will show you, uh, there are posts that I made on Blockland, like when I was 15 years old. I'm now 30. And there is a point in the next year where I'm going to be twice as old uh, as I was when those posts were made, which means that those posts will be older than the human being was that wrote them when they were made. And I still live under the shadow of that. People bring it up all the fucking time. I still get called a pedophile all the time. I can never sue anybody for calling me a pedophile because that shit has been out there for so long, even though I was a teenager, that it has become like so poisoned that I can't even defend my own reputation ever. And it's never going away. It, I've accepted this. I just deal with it. I've accepted that if I can't change someone's mind on that, I don't want to know them. They're not a kind of person I want to be associated with anyways. And I just have to deal with it. And there's nothing I can do about it. And Vito thinks that two years is, uh, is such a long time because Vito said something stupid when he was 35 fucking years old. Vito is older now than I am now or older than, than I am now making the kind of mistakes and saying dumb shit that even a fuck, like a fucking preteener would know not to say. I never said anything as bad as Vito did. And I still get like called a pedophile for it. And I'm like, buddy, if you're going to cry because of shit that's happening now, and you think that it's been uh, such a long time since you said them that you should be forgiven for it. And people should stop thinking that you're a pedophile. You're, you're in for a rough fucking time because you're going to be trying to be an LA comedian for the rest of your life. You're never going to go away. You're never going to go try to find a real job. You're going to be one of Dick's dingleberries for as long as he tolerates you. And you're constantly going to be trying to weasel in your way into L.A. clubs and, and comedy clubs and all this gay shit. And everyone is always going to know you as the pedophile. It will follow you around for literally the rest of your life. There will not be a single day that Vito Gasaldi is not reminded of the time that he said that he said that he said he was a pedophile and that he wanted to fuck children in the ass. And he thinks that it's rough right now because it's been two years. Oh, buddy. <laughs> the dumb shit you say on the internet never goes away, you know. <laughs> I, hope, <laughs> I hope you can take it. I hope you're mental, you're stoic enough to be able to handle this for the rest of your life. Because God, you know, you might look at that and say, God, I'm a fat piece of shit. I'm fucking worthless. I don't have any prospects. I'm going to be haunted for this for the rest of my life. And you might think dark thoughts. And I should say, no, Vito. Don't let those dark thoughts win. You might be homeless. You might not have any prospects. You might be begging for cash on the side of the street, but don't ever let those dark thoughts win, Vito. Sure, the nightmare will never end for you, Vito, but don't ever let darkness win, Vito. You have to stay optimistic in the face of adversity, even though that adversity will be a never-ending torment for the rest of your fucking life. Just saying. Take it from me. Shit's rough out there, bro. You can make it through. Uh, so, my aside about Vito. Uh, what's on? What was on my screen before I flipped it off? Uh, D Day Cobra. This is apparently somebody who is like in the comic book circles and uh, is an important associate of, of Riketa. But he says, playing sports growing up and playing Modern Warfare 2, I've been involved in the most disgusting and offensive shit-talking known to man good times. Under no circumstances was fucking children part of any of that. Nobody, not even the worst people, would think that's acceptable. It's not normal. Riketa Law shoots back and says, Jude, child molestation jokes have been a part of comedy for a long time. No one likes to talk... No one has to like them or think they're funny. And then he links to Louis C.K. And I want to point out that this is like a deliberate misunderstanding. Actually, D-Day says it for me, so I'll just read that. He says, jokes told by making fun of real pedophiles because they're terrible people versus talking about being the pedophile over and over again with no context at times. There's a big difference. If you want to keep defending him, go for it. But that's really confusing because you're smarter than most people I know. Apparently not. There's a... My mama used to say that stupid is as stupid does my boy and Riketa is acting pretty fucking stupid someone uh, also argues says then make one about your kids tell us which one would be the funniest for Vito to molest 
where Kata says, I don't make child rape jokes. And then he says, why not? Are they taboo or something? Not really, only to an insular and mildly hypocritical tribal community. This is the great thing. Um, and people call him out about this. But I'll, I'll circle back to that. I have a, a thought about that. Dick says that he'll be at Nick's show in Nashville. And then Vito says, this is why you keep asking to watch my smart celibate kids. Still no. It's a really, it's really, really creepy to call your own children celibate. And he says this twice. I think there's another tweet where he says, um, Hey, Vito comedy. You can't babysit my kids. Quit asking. He goes on like this. Uh, Flash asked Chrissy Meyer, who's another uh, associate of Rakeda, who is now being bombarded with shit like this, uh, where Vito says that he's trying to fuck kids, and uh, Chrissy Meyer says, I'd give it an F-. minus." Rakeda bizarrely follows this up and says, what did the kid rate it? Which is just awkward and uncomfortable even to read. Um, Frank Pellegrino, who I think is also an associate of Rikeda says, Re, Rikeda is a pedo. And then Rikeda, oh, he, he follows up. He sucks the dick. And he says, Rikeda is a pedo. And says, oh my God, get sued. Um, Panda says that Louis C.K. only got arrested for jerking off in the hotel in private. And Rikeda says, we know they were not kids because he was only jerking off. Oh no, it's another child rape joke. He thinks, he really thinks of this. He really took the, he drank the juju, the cow milk. And now he just thinks that this is like the funny shit that you could possibly say. Oh, Frank is Chrissy's husband. Okay. Meanwhile, let's see how loud is funny is doing. <laughs> right away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That fucking laugh, man. There's something about when he does a show where anytime he's like uncomfortable and it, he doesn't want there to be a pause. Like if I just start talking. You might think that's really uncomfortable. Like, wow. Now that you can hear the ambience in your own room, nothing happening. Just a picture of a man who gets fucked in the ass while dressed as a cow on the screen. Like, wow, that's uncomfortable. So he doesn't want to do that. Instead, anytime there's an awkward silence, he has trained himself using the most sophisticated LA comedian tactic out there to just go, ack, 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 ack. and he does it. It's like, it's like once you once if you listen to the dick show now that I pointed this out, you're gonna notice it. Anytime there's like an uncomfortable silence, he goes ack, 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 to make sure that it doesn't it doesn't get uh <laughs> it doesn't actually uh stay silent. <laughs> We've been wanting I Sum Two to be good so two we can stop failure. talking about it. <laughs> if I Sum Two was good, we would have went, well, at least he listened to reason instead it's just gonna uh, go on forever. They're going after Nick now, it's breaking my heart here yeah, and I'm talking know. about I don't it. Want Nick why is Nick why are you going to Nick Ricada? Because he's friends with Dick? That's the stupidest thing in the world. You guys are attacking I mean, first of all, you got it's not gonna work. Secondly, you guys are attacking things that uh I don't value. Mm. Like friendships. Right. <laughs> 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 If you're dealing, you're trying to spend C uh, Disney bucks at Caesar's Palace over there. You know, you're not going to be friends with Dick anymore. Ah, oh, we got you. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I like friendships. Yeah. I'm <laughs> but, not... you know, I don't need them. Right. <laughs> I'm just, I love Nick. I'm just kidding. I think it's sad. I that feel that bad that he's getting shit. I, I, as I always say, disavow me. Whatever makes I life easier, honestly, you know? I sent him a message. integrity. Yeah. Uh, this is a situation <laughs> of your own doing. <laughs> maybe you shouldn't, maybe you should just, you know, do a second draft of your gay little comic. If he, <laughs> made, if he made a good comic, we wouldn't have. What a wonderful video. You know what's, I laugh. That's a great joke. And you know what makes uh, jokes funny? Is that a great joke always has a little bit of truth hidden in it somewhere. It's like a little shard of life that gives it gives it meaning and purpose. I love a joke that has some truth, some bite to it, chat. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, just some more tweets. Okay, so this is more about the Drexel shit. So, um, reading these tweets, I'm convinced that when I started going after Drexel, he started focusing on that, like, oh my god, why are you being so mean to Drexel? And that sounds familiar, it's because that's what Dick does with Vito. Anytime you criticize him and Vito uh, collectively, he just says, why are you being so mean to Vito? And Vito is like his pet retard pedophile that anytime anybody says anything bad about him, he can just say, why are you being mean to Vito? And it completely takes the heat off of him. 
And it feels like for a while, Raquel was doing that with Drexel, where it's like, why are you talking? Why are you talking about my poor Negro that way? And literally, literally invoking the race card before I even do it, which is shocking. That's like some uh, uh, some speed racing shit. And then he's, so why are you making fun of my poor Negro? Why are you being so racist? Uh, he says, I love this. I told him, Noel, your brain doesn't work like a normal human and you draw wrong conclusions. Here's an, exa- here's an example. Your conclusions on Drex are objectively wrong. And I say, he paraphrases, you can't make me like Drexel. I don't care if you like Drexel. I know your conclusions are wrong because I used to know him. It's an example of how you used to get things wrong by being autistic. So he's not trying to make me like Drexel. He says, oh my God, no, don't like Drexel. He doesn't care. I don't care. It's literally an example. I know you have wrong. Drex is bad and you can't make me defend him or like him. Raffle, okay, here's a different example. Runs to Hugbox or K to DM to complain about how the forum treats Drexel and him. I like Even reading his paraphrase, What is the, he really, it really does summarize it correctly though. Cause he, in, in the first paragraph, cause he says, no, the, you have a you problem and your you problem is that you don't, you have assumed false things about Drexel. And then I correctly indicate to him that what I know about Drexel is his own words. And if what he is saying, there's, there's one or two uh, realities with Drexel, either a, he, um, he had sex with a girl that he has known since she was 13 under the guise of saving her from sexual slavery. Cause for whatever reason, the second that she turned 18, she was desperate for hardcore BDSM with a black man, uh, which is a ridiculous story. Um, unless he did groom her or B he made up a really awful story to look cool. And the, the funny thing about that is that if the truth is he made it up to look cool, he can never say that. He will literally admit that it's true and just deny that it's grooming until he's blue in the face, if that's even possible for someone with melanin. Um, rather than admit that he made it up, because making it up makes him look even worse because his entire identity is based around his sexual prowess. Like, Drexel doesn't exist. It's just the guy that has kinky sex and is a, like a... I don't even know what you want to call him because he says he's like MGTOW pickup or I don't know what the fuck he likes to call himself, but that's like his brand. So he'll literally maintain this, this story of, uh, I fucked a girl that I knew and took to Disney world because I was fucking her mom at the time. And then when she turned the second that she turned 18, she wanted to fuck BBC and get into hardcore sex dungeon shit, uh, with me in particular, coincidentally even though I didn't do anything to groom her into doing so. Like, he's going to have to maintain that lie, if it is a lie, because he does, he'll never admit that he just made up some story about getting laid. Um, which, is my, which is my point, and he basically just confirms that. Then Drexel uh, signs off. He sees that I've talked shit because Dick Masterson. And says, I have had an insane rant about Drexel. I've lost my mind. You can hear it in my voice. I have completely become unhinged. I'm dangling freely by a thread in the, the, the torrential winds of my own, uh, my own mental planes. And he says, sh- sh- <clears throat> shout out to all the homies in my corner that know this is pure BS, but because I'm me, someone find Josh Moon and tell him to DM me. And I'll come on his show. Let's have a little discussion. No, um, I have tentatively agreed to this, but I don't see the point though. Cause I can sum up this discussion in, in, um, a few sentences. Hey man, how much backs you've been smashing? I smashed the hardcore white girl pussy on the rag and hear me dog. You feel me and shit. How much pussy you slay, bro. You is a virgin and shit. And then I'm going to say, my dude, I am not going to tell you anything about my personal life. And he's going to say, that's what I thought. That sounds like a big old goose egg to me. You know what I'm saying? What, what, what man, what man doesn't show off the notches on their bedpost and shit? More fucking big snood. <laughs> it looks like it's just going to be the most unproductive conversation ever because I'm not going to say anything. Uh, if I'm a virgin or if I've uh, had sex with a thousand different women in 20 different countries, you'll literally never know because I'm never going to tell you. Um, so I don't know if it, like, I don't, I don't know what the, the point of the discussion would be. And if he could, maybe I'll, I'll make that a, a, a condition. If he wants to talk to me, 
he has to first tell me what he wants to talk about because before then I'm not going to do it. He has to state a thesis to me, <laughs> the thesis of our argument to be discussed. Um, then it continues. Uh, someone says, I don't know too much about Nick. Nick has had him on a few times. And all I remember is that he's a free speech advocate. One time Nick showed a Drex a picture of Moon and Drex said he had soft eyes, but I don't think that would set him off, especially since it was a while ago. He says, right. And that was a troll job. Nick tricked me into dissing him. I thought it was all good fun. And we went on the show. He was raised by a single mother. Was he raised by a single mother? Question mark, exclamation point. That would explain it. If I was raised by a single mother, I wouldn't be able to handle any criticism of my appearance, and I would fly off the handle three years after it fucking happens. Makes perfect sense. Drexel's figure this out. His 8,000 IQ, um, his Wakandi Wakandium unobtainium evil brain, augmented brain, has discovered the root cause of my issues. Uh... Mario says, what's his deal? Why does he have a heart on for Drex? Laughing, crying emoji. He says, probably hacked my account and realized I'm smashing a chick he likes with my bull squad. He took offense to the fact that I called him a archetypal N-word. And he's went down and said, debunked it. So I'm not an N-word. I've never been to jail. Uh, and so on and so forth. But it's like, that's such like a black thing to say. Man, Shit, man, he got he got that beef because I'm up in his bitch and shit, man. I'm out, I'm in that bitch's guts and shit with my 12 inch BBC, nigga. <laughs> what? Come on, can you be like more of a fucking stereotype and how you handle criticism? Um, Morel also asks, who the hell is what is null, man? This had me confused. Haha, <laughs> I never heard of this someone before I refer to you as Drexel. Apparently, referring to him as Drexel is an insult to him. Like, I guess people just call him Drex or, or or some weird, like, kink slave name. I really don't fucking know what they call him. But he says, only my parents and childhood friends call me Drex, so this beta isn't beta. is neither. So he best keep my government name out of his fucking mouth. He literally says, Will Smith slap. That's, the, that's some of the blackest shit I've ever read. I think I, I think I hit it too. I think I nailed it. Shit, man, I'm getting darker and darker. My 3.5 percent's glowing today, radiating in the sun. Got that vitamin D shit today. Chaos Drive says, "Is Josh hating on Drexel because Drex has lots of sex with lots of women?" That sounds like a fuckboy shit right there. Says this dude hates himself most of all. Everything he says about me is pure projection. So fucking typical. So boring. So then he says, yo, Satino, imagine this feeder fraud calling my Discord a, P a PUA one, something I've never done. So Josh Moon makes fun of our homie Disabled Cell, Low Class Moon, slanders me. Discord is paid because public ones get reported than needed. And then he says, send, uh, in regards to someone sending him, I don't even know what this is. Uh, it says, send, send, send away, like I said, scorched earth. And here's a picture of... Uh, Stocking, as I talked about on my Blockland stream, it says this woman is called Stocking. They had a one sided relationship on the Blockland forums. She is a self admitted lollycon. This is a girl he war role played war with, but she dumped him and only tolerated him out of pity. Apparently, he constantly threatened suicide. Drex says, Go, somebody find Noel and ask him if this is true. If so, I want to know why A, he's such a beta, and B through Z, why he didn't kill himself. So, this, this is his plan. Drex is so offended that I have taken his own words from not too long ago, something he was proud about, something he was bragging openly about, and he is going to find my Achilles heel, and he has found the shocking new information that nobody has heard about, about Lachlan Forum, and he thinks that he's got me. Surely, this will be the end of Joshua Moon and Kiwi Farms. And if you're wondering, I'm not going to even address it, because I've fucking talked about it so many times, I don't even care. Um... He's posting this on his Discord, and these 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 are some some random chimp event level tweets. I love these. It says the mole on the server is going to get exposed soon. I got a feeling. Uh, it says, "Don't worry, this shit will take place on Twitter." And Sneedsbury, that is about the D. Jealous. In <laughs> He's so fucking stupid. Why are they all like this? Why are they all like this? Is that literally the only thing that black people have any confidence about? 
that they think that their dick is bigger and that's it that's the only thing they have no accomplishments no history no written word not even numerals they have nothing under their belt in the last 10,000 years of human history so they got to go shit man but our dicks is bigger that's it that's all they say ever <laughs> shit man we invented peanut butter and shit motherfucker <laughs> that's, that's it that's all they got uh, something I would never do unjustified in regards to when there's nothing worthwhile to find the drama seeker finds the nearest associate for the drama's part, but that's not what's happening. I'm making fun of Riketa because he is close to me and I know what's happening and I find it worth criticizing, especially because I do like Riketa. I like sober Riketa. I like the Riketa who is like one of the only people out there who would shine a light on shit that nobody else would talk about out of fucking fear. And now he's like this craven, disgusting slob that's like allowing his children to become an object of ridicule and scorn on the internet so that he can make Vito look better by comparing. I really, I really fucking hate Noi, new Rikita, okay? Um, he continues. Oh, this part. I love this. Uh, Sneedsbury, very, I don't know which one of you is Sneedsbury, but this man is the only person with an IQ above one. Drexel, legit, I've read through these logs. He's the only person in his Discord server. He's the dumbest person in his Discord server. He's dumber. Drexel is the dumbest person in his Discord server, and he's dumber than the guy in the UK who has to get a license from the government to fuck because they can't, they, he's so retarded. They can't be sure that any sex he has is, is uh, is consensual because of his low IQ that they have to actually step in and verify. Oh yeah. Okay. This is like a thing. You can do this. Like he's dumber than that guy in terms of how st stupid is, is what stupid does. But then Sneezeberry comes in. He has an IQ of a hundred. He says, what's this about Drexel and Noel now? I caught Maddie. Yeah. Don't engage with this one. Nick has already said the most retarded shit imaginable. You don't need to add even more on top. Big black friend, uh, parentheses, mayor of Midtown says, Nope. Fuck that. I'll engage. I'm going to purge this fucking mole in my server. Sneedsbury, again, with his radiant 100 IQ shining through the, the darkness here. He says, um, I'm on Twitter. Yeah, all right, then. If you want my advice, don't do anything that crosses the line and don't say anything that'll prove Josh right. Nope. Roast and sue this motherfucker. Anyone defending Moon gets kicked the fuck out of my server. Fuck that, dude. Mole will be found. Like, just, like, insert for various, I'm not saying, not because he's black, but just in general, insert loud monkey noises at this point in time in your head. Um, he's really, he's going to sue me. He's going to sue me. He's going to sue me for saying that the gross story that he made public multiple times is grooming because it sounds like fucking grooming. He thinks that, that that's actionable defamation. Ask Riketa what actionable defamation sounds like. Because if you take what Riketa said about Montagraph and what, what he claims is defamation versus what I said about Drexel and what he claims is defamation, there's a bit of a discrepancy. I think one is worse than the other, but I don't know. I'll handle this. Fuck it, I'll do this. I got <laughs> that would be funny. That would be funny. That would be funny because if it's, uh, I <laughs> imagine if he loses, <laughs> he said you're a groomer. And then we say, well, you probably are one based on this story. It's a reasonable person could assume that you are based on what you said. Um, and then shit, he's in Minnesota, right? Isn't that where, no, he's in Wisconsin. I was going to say, damn, didn't Patrick lose attorney's fees? In Min no, but that was in Milwaukee. Oh, well. Mo will he's so pissed that people are screen capping this. He said he went on Twitter and said that he that the only reason this Discord is private is because the public ones get deleted. And then he's in there saying the mole will be found. Well, it sounds like, motherfucker, you're actually a little bit embarrassed about the conversations you have in this gay little club of yours. And you don't want that to be public, and that's why you're trying to find a mole. The Kiwi Farms is wide open. I'm never mole hunting because there's no there's nothing to mole for. It's all out in the open. So I don't ever have to have to say, I am going to find that mole. I'm going to find that mole because it actually is public. Funny stuff. Just complaining about it. Um, and then talking to themselves, which is in this, these conversations are why. So the Drexel's the dumbest person in this room. So that's that. And then there's two more clips. I'll play through these. 
Null had a line. Oh, this is I remember Null this had a line. In that conversation that resonated and hit home with me in such a great, great way. And he said this. He said, if I had a button that I could press that would kill all pedophiles, I would press it twice just to make sure none were missed. Actually. Fantastic. That reminds me. That reminds me of um, something I forgot to mention last stream. On last stream, um, I was talking about something he said in public. He said, all you need to know about Josh is that he thinks that exec the risk of executing innocent people. Oh God. No, it was, it was something about how he said that I accept the risk that sometimes innocent people will be hurt in the name of justice. And the reason why he said that is because we were having a, a conversation about like, he tried to deflect and say, what if Vito isn't a pedophile? And I, I know that he is because of what he said in his association with Max Carson, who I also is 100% convinced and is a pedophile because he's fucking gross and vile. You can just tell by looking at him. Um, but he said, what if he isn't? And I said, well, I'm pretty sure that he is. I'm very certain that he is. And it's like with the death penalty and the, with the death penalty um, and it, with justice in general, we accept that some innocent people will be hurt um, because the alternative is not having any justice system at all. And specifically the death penalty, we accept that some people might be executed because some people really, really deserve to fucking die. And he, he said that was like, he doesn't agree with it. He's anti-death penalty because he thinks that that would be an aberration of justice. It's not an acceptable risk. And I just said, well, agree to disagree. Cause that's, I, I believe it is worth the risk. And he, he extrapolated this conversation with the death penalty and he said like that i'm just reckless with how i pursue people like if i i go after people it doesn't matter if they're innocent or guilty or if they deserve it or not because as some guilty people will be hit in the net will be cat, caught caught in the net that i that the huge wide berth of net that i drop to to hurt her, meringue people and hurt them that uh, some people will deserve it so therefore like that's how he phrased it or um presented it and it's the exact opposite um, I, I just think that with, especially with Vito in particular, it's an acceptable level of risk. Cause I'm so convinced that he is one and I just, I don't want to cancel him. I want, I, in fact, I want the opposite. I want Vito to be presented to as many people as possible for what he really is. Um, but I took issue with that and I did, I forgot to mention that last stream. Play this as well. 60 days. I don't care what you do. I don't care. Uh, I'm sorry that you are afflicted by liking children. Get away from all of them. Move to the mountains where there are no children. Do something. Get away. Get away. Uh, and don't. Don't. You. It, it, and here, le legitimately, the reason you have to get away is because cuties exists cuties exists right now it's going to be released in september on netflix that means that non-offending pedos will be watching cuties they'll be watching something they won't be able to get away from it much longer because our media is disgusting and will push it and push it and push it into their faces. And if you don't think your sexuality is molded and sculpted by the media you consume, I've got another story for you. Again, this is not ever a call for anyone to do any legal action against something. It's different. But here's the thing. When like the, the Christian scare about rock music and gyrating hips and all that bullshit or whatever, 
It's right. It's right in principle. Music, media is the gateway to the to human sexuality. Of course it is. Of course it is. If you are like I'm not saying that you can be made into a pedo or something like that. that's that's completely different. I'm saying that it activates reaches into parts of your mind that other things don't. That's what art is designed to do. And that art reaches in and grabs something and activates it. If you are a non-offending pedophile. Oh, all these, all these takes are just like dust in the wind at this point. Like he's, he's really good. Like, yeah, someone said current, um, <clears throat> Old old Nick would call out current Nick. I'm sorry, I'm losing my voice, so we're going to move along. I said I think I said everything that I meant to say about Ricardo at this point. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CAC of Remember to like and subscribe.